Hello and welcome to One Moray Place. We're going to tell you something about the history of the house and our work in restoring it over the past 15 years or so. This print shows the area around Strathbungo in the early 19th century, the rural landscape being slowly affected by new industries. Shortly before Strathbungo was developed, it was called a tiny little congregation of houses, for the most part humble one or two storied buildings inhabited principally by weavers, miners and other descriptions of operatives. These plans show how the planning of the Victorian Strathbungo changed from being a series of villas to a regular array of terraced streets. The developers, John McIntyre and William Stevenson, commissioned Alexander Thompson to design the first prestigious terrace in their development. And Alexander Thompson purchased number one from the developers, the house at the far end of this photograph. So Alexander Thompson had already been designing his tenements and villas and churches in his distinctive style across Glasgow's south side, as you can see in these images. Thompson's inspirations for Moray Place were ancient Greek buildings like the Stoa of Attalus in Athens, seen here on the left. Thompson admired what he called the mysterious power of horizontal elements in carrying the mind away into space and into speculations upon infinity. He took his architecture very seriously. As well as its strict geometry, the decoration is also drawn from Greek originals. and We'll see more of this classical inspiration inside. Above the stairs, for example, the skylight is clearly a version of those in old Roman houses, such as those seen that can still be seen at Pompeii. His doors as well have echoes of Roman doors, also shown in murals at Pompeii. One of the first things we did to see was to see if there was any decoration left from Thompson's time. This involved removing a hundred year, hundred years of wallpaper and paint, cleaning the paint, paint surface, repairing the plaster. And as can be seen here, the effect is dramatic. This restoration work was done by students from the University of Northumbria over s several years. The details are drawn from Greek originals, such as those Thompson could have found in the pattern books of the mid-Victorian period. In the ground floor dining room, we also discovered decoration, <clears throat> but unfortunately this had been painted over um, and it was impractical to restore the whole frieze. Much of the plaster work in the house was cracked and damaged and had been badly repaired. So we did a large amount of work throughout the house.
we removed paint from woodwork and ironwork. <clears throat> the original pine floorboards were scraped, revealing the beautiful woodwork of the floors and the window surrounds. We rehung the sash windows to the way they originally worked, and in that, this enabled us to hang curtains in the drawing room as they were originally intended behind the cornice. We moved a bedroom door back to its original place on the landing, thus restoring Thompson's original plan. Moray Place was a comparatively modest house. In these plans, you can see on the ground floor, there was a dining room at the front, kitchen and spare bedroom behind, and scullery and maid's bedroom in the rear extension. Upstairs is a drawing room and three further bedrooms and a small bathroom. On the night of the census of the 2nd of April, 1871, Thompson and his seven children, his wife, and two servants and a guest were staying in the house. That's 12 people. By then, the new streets of Strathbungo comprised Moray Place, Regent Park Square, the north side of Queen Square, and the tenements along Pollockshaws Road. The city of Glasgow was booming in the 1860s, as you can see in this print the river full of ships and the quayside full of industry. And Thompson's career benefited from this new wealth. But Thompson died quite young in 1875. The house was redecorated by his widow in the 1880s or 90s. And this included painting and wallpapering over Thompson's classical friezes. We removed all this later decoration. After Thompson's widow died, a Dr. Forrest extended the house with a consulting room and waiting room and additional bedrooms and a new bathroom. This involved redecorating the house, of course, in a new fashionable style, and he changed the lobby door which we have replaced with an exact replica of Thompson's original. In 2013 to 14, the owners of numbers one to 10 worked together with a grant from the Glasgow City Heritage Trust. We reinstated the beautiful lamps that once stood outside the house's front doors and the boundary railings. We've now reunified the look of the terrace as a whole. The Gifnick stone which, from which the houses were built is very soft and easily weathered. We replaced some of the more damaged stone. Work on the house still continues. We believe we're bringing back the original Victorian character of One Moray Place preserving the best of Thompson's time while making it a comfortable home for the 21st century. We hope you've enjoyed this brief tour.